Okay, so uh, this is probably the last video in the series, and I just kind of want to uh, kind of wrap this up here. Um, so we're, I, I moved on to page 24. I, I, I moved a little bit ahead. I just, in terms of Iago stage managing, I also want you to notice one of my favorite moments of Iago stage managing. Um, and I'm on page 24 here. Oh, let me get my, um, sorry, I'm going to fix my, 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 my clip is on the wrong side. If you don't clip it on the right side, then the pages all blow away. Um, so Iago, um, Iago here, uh, Othello's ready to kill him, right? He sees the handkerchief that he has, and he, he heard how he talked about sex. Again, uh, Cassie was talking about Bianca, but he thinks it was, uh, Othello thinks it was Desdemona. I would have in nine years of killing um, a fair woman, a sweet woman. So he feels sad about how wonderful Des he thought Desdemona was. And Iago says he must forget that. Um, he says, let her rotten perish and be damned tonight, for she shall not live. No, my heart is turned to stone, real simple metaphor. I strike it and it hurts my hand. Oh, the world hath not a sweeter creature. She might by line, she might lie by an emperor's side and command him tasks. So he keeps, he, he says, I have to kill her. And then he keeps thinking of reasons why she's so sweet and wonderful. She's so great, I don't want to kill her. But I have to. This is one of the great ironies of the play, is that, is that Othello continually says, I have to kill her. Oh, but I don't want to. She's so beautiful. Oh, I have to kill her. Oh, but she's so perfect. Um, and Iago says, nope, that's, we're past that. <laughs> Um, because this is the, he, he now, he claims he's given him the proof. Um, and then you get one of the most interesting little, um, the most interesting little, uh, sort of bits of, um, uh, stage managing from Iago. I think it's one of my favorite little things here. Um, the pity of it, Iago, the pity of it. It's a great irony that Othello feels so bad about killing her. Like he doesn't have to, um, but he feels like he has to. Um, I will chop her into messes cuckled me, meaning cheat on me. I will chop her into messes, meaning I'm going to hack her to pieces. Um, he, he's cheating on me, just foul on her with mine officer. That's fouler. Get me some poison, Iago, this night. I'll not expostulate her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again. So he says, you know, Iago, get me some poison. I got to poison her while she's sleeping, because if she talks to me, she's so beautiful, she's so perfect, she's going to talk me out of it. Um, and in one of the most interesting bits um, of stage managing, Iago says, um, do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed, even the very bed she is contaminated. Oh, good, good. The justice of it, please. It's very good. And then for Cassio, he says, I'll kill him. Um, it's a neat moment in the play. Um, because what is Iago doing? He's, you know, when you think about, um, you ever heard the phrase, the punishment fits the crime? And sometimes you have this idea that, um, like in hell, there's these sort of ironic punishments. So like, if your sin was that you loved food too much, that in hell, they're going to overfeed you until you explode or whatever, you know, um, whatever you hated is going to come back and whatever you loved is going to come bite you in the ass in hell or whatever, if it was sinful. Um, now, if you've seen the movie Seven, um, all the punishments are based around the seven deadly sins, um, and they're all kind of, you know, whatever the thing you did in life uh, is how they, they sort of, they, you get killed in this movie. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. I don't remember the movie that well, honestly. But, like, there's a girl who's like, no, that's a bad example. What is that? I can't even remember the fucking sins in that movie. Um, the point is, is that is that the, this idea of the punishment fits the crime. Um, you see, it has a kind of metaphorical value. Um, this idea of the punishment and the crime. Um, it's it's worth pointing out that that it's a metaphor, right? The idea it's that your punishment is a metaphor for whatever terrible things, um, uh, whatever terrible things you did in life. So what's interesting about this is what Iago is 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 Othello says I'm gonna poison her because I gotta poison her while she's sleeping because if she talks to me, um, I'm gonna, you know, she's gonna talk me out of it. And Iago says strangle her in her bed. Um, which is a, because because he says, that's the bed where she cheated on you. So isn't that the perfect place to kill her? Do you see that he's essentially creating a real life metaphor? Or I guess, I guess irony is another way to say it. Maybe irony is a better way to put it. It's ironic that the bed she had so much fun in with Cassio, Othello imagines, is the bed that she dies in. And so Iago is creating an irony. Um, sorry, I, I shouldn't have said metaphor. I should have said irony the whole time. Ironic punishments, um, not metaphorical punishments. So the punishments are ironic. They're, it's the opposite of, you know, whatever. If you enjoyed something in life, you're going to hate it in death. Um, um, so actually, a classic example of the ironic punishment is Midas's touch. As a, a king who was, he loved gold. And so he had a wish um, from like a magic genie. 
Um, and he wished that everything he touched turned to gold. And, and he was so happy because everything he touched turned to gold and he loved gold. But then when he tried to eat, his food turned to gold and he couldn't eat anything and he died. So it's an ironic punishment because he loved gold so much, but then they gave him so much gold that he couldn't eat his food and he died. Um, it's a similar thing here. Iago is creating an irony. Oh, she cheated on you in that bed. Kill her in the bed. Um, it's um, he's creating an irony just like Shakespeare does in the play. Like Shakespeare created all these ironies in the play. Like everybody says, honest Iago, but he's not honest. He's very dishonest, but nobody knows that. Um, so just like Shakespeare creates those ironies for the audience, um, Iago creates those ironies. He's essentially stage managing um, all of this insane. Okay, cool. This is going really good. Let's see what else we have in here to talk about. Um, gonna give me a sec to kind of find the next thing I want to jump to. It may be the end of the play. Okay, let's keep going. Sorry, I probably should prep this a little bit more, but I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, all right, so let's get to the, the, yeah, so I think I would like to wrap this up, really, and then I'm going to decide later what I'm going to do. Um, so one of the, the last, I'm kind of at the last moment in the play, um, and I kind of, and there's some other things I might want to talk about in here, but. Um, one of the last things that happens in the play, just to kind of sort of wrap up a lot of this Iago material, um, sorry, um, is that is that Iago, um, Othello confronts Iago. Um, it's one of the most amazing moments in the whole play. I'm on page 33 now. This is the end. Everybody's, you know, but Desdemona, he's killed Desdemona. Everything's terrible. Um, and Othello says, um, I ask your pardon. Will you, I pray, demand that demi-devil, meaning like a half-demon, why he hath thus ensnared my soul and body. Um, he wants to know, and he calls, um, he calls Iago a demi-devil. Um, he's like half of a, half of a, a, a demon or something. Um, he says it up here too. I look down toward his feet, but that's a fable. If that thou beest a devil, I cannot kill thee. Um, he, he looks at Iago's feet thinking he's going to have like demon feet. Um, and this is the worst part about all of Othello, the play. The worst thing about the play is that He's not a demon. He's not a monster. He's not a witch. He's a bad person. He's just a man. You could stab him and he dies. Um, but it's, it makes him more evil. If he was like a demon from hell that was unkillable or the devil or something, um, it'd be extra dramatic. Um, it's a similar character in the movie No Country for Old Men who seems like a demon or a devil or a force of nature, but at the end it's revealed he's just a person. It's just that you couldn't fight him. You could have just stabbed him and he would have died. He's a regular person. He doesn't have special magical powers. Um, he's not a demon. He's not a devil. Um, he's a regular person that ruined your life. Um, and he, he says to him, um, ask him, why did he do this? And Iago just says, demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. And he doesn't. That's the last line that Iago has in the play. He says that he, all of his reasons for doing all of this were all nonsense. And he just says, you know what? I'm going to be silent forever, and I never will. And they're like, we're going to torture you. And I don't think that torture is going to get him to say anything. Um, I think Iago is done. I think he has created his horrible masterpiece of evil, and there's nothing more to do. And he just says, you know what? I don't have any explanations. I don't have any big evil speeches. I don't have any reasons for this. It's just something I did. Um, he just likes causing chaos and terror. Um, and all those reasons he gave, oh, Othello gave, gave Cassio the job that I wanted, and I'm, I don't like black people, he says, um, or he, he says he uses racial kind of stuff, he says Othello had sex with my wife, he says I'm in love with Desdemona, Cassio had sex with my wife, it's all nonsense. And in the end, when he says, why did you do it, he says, I'm never going to speak again, um, because he's done it. This is one of the craziest things about Othello, um, is it's a story where the bad guy gets everything he wants. He wins. He 100% wins, like Thanos in Infinity War. It's a story about a bad guy who's actually able to accomplish all of the things. And when it's done, he's just like, he has nothing else to say. He has nothing else to do. He created this nightmare. And that's the end. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll come see you guys to talk about the next play, uh, or maybe some more about this play. I haven't quite decided yet. I think I'll probably move on to the next play after this. Um, but I think that's the end of the videos for the day.